in finance, you actually end up learning, having to code because all the old people, older traders in the room don't do it. They're just like, hey, you, you look young. Uh, <laughs> why don't you pick this up? Because we, you know, we're, too, we're too busy doing the other important stuff. I don't know what uh, this machine does, but you seem to understand yeah, yeah. it because you were made around the same time the machine was invented. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Li Ngo, and welcome to Educative Sessions, a podcast series with people in the developer world about their coding experiences. This is powered by Educative, which makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. Today, my guest is Sean Wang, who works in developer experience at Temporal.io. And we're going to talk about a lot of things, especially Sean's journey into the code, uh, a career in code, as well as hashtag learn in public and what it means for developing other aspirational coders and careers as well. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lee. Uh, happy to be here. Wonderful. So let's go right into the very first question. And my first question for you is really about you and how did you first get into software development as a career? Yeah, I had quite a few false starts over my life. Um, I did a computer class when I was in primary school uh, where, I, where I programmed in basic. Uh, and then I got into Excel, you know, in, in, uh, when I was serving in the army, um, all Singaporeans have to serve two years in the army. And, um, and I did, a, I did business school. So we did, we did Excel there as well. Um, my first career was in finance. So I did a lot of uh, investment banking, trading, and then eventually um, hedge fund stock investments. I was a stock analyst for a San Francisco based hedge fund. Uh, I invested in tech stocks um, and I, and did a lot of, um, some some modeling in Excel and then Python and Haskell, but never really had a title as software engineer uh, mm -hmm. until I basically burned out of of uh, investing. It was a very high stress job, mm -hmm. uh, and realized that I I liked the coding part of my job more. So I decided to go full time on it. Uh, so at age thirty, I I changed careers uh, from finance into tech, and uh, did that that was a hard transition, but um, you know powered through it, and a lot of it was due to. Uh, coding communities that that got me my, my first uh, software job. Gotcha. So, uh, I mean, to take a step back and go back to your career in finance, uh, tell us a little bit about the coding aspects of being in finance. What kind of logics or what kind of ways uh, that were your mind activated when you were uh, basically a practicing person uh, in trade in stocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are a bunch of ways. So there's some back off, you know, in, in finance, we separate things to back office, middle office, and front office uh, based on how close you are to the money or to, to the profit making part of the company. So back office is where you typically would start. Uh, and that would be like accounting essentially, right? Uh, does the money at the end of the day tally up with everything that was done during the day? Um, and then you go into risk management. So uh, are, are, you, are you modeling your risks, right? Are you, uh, are you tripping any risk limits in terms of how much you're invested or exposed to any particular country, uh, industry, or single stock name? Um, and then you go into front office where, uh, for example, I was a currency derivatives, derivatives uh, <laughs> trader. So I was pricing options using uh, some of the apps that I made for myself. Wow. Um, and those are, those are all ways in which you can use programming. And essentially, software is eating the world and software is eating finance. Mm -hmm. So when you're up and coming in, in finance, you actually end up learning, having to code because all the old people, older traders in the room don't do it. They're just like, hey, you, you look young. Uh, <laughs> why don't you pick this up? Because we, you know, we're, too, we're too busy doing the other important stuff. I don't know what uh, this machine does, but you seem to understand yeah, yeah. it because you were made around the same time the machine was invented. <laughs> uh, I know that, that experience pretty... all too well with my parents. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I think it's a, it's a pretty um, uh, archaic way to think about things because then eventually they're the ones that don't have the, the skills to keep up. Um, right. And they only have themselves to blame because they, they just passed it off to someone else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I, I, I'm partially thankful, but then also I'm partially reflective of people who stop learning after a while because they mm -hmm. think they're done. Yeah, and I think that's actually a great way for us to segue into uh, my next big question, which is this interesting campaign that you've gotten involved in called Learn in Public. And you described a lot about how you, uh, you know, transitioned out of the finance world into a coding boot camp. And now I'm a public coder, but it sounds like continuous learning is an important uh, philosophy for people to keep in mind. So um, tell us more about what um, hashtag learn in public means and uh, how does it apply to other coders? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was doing, I was basically preparing a speech 
like a graduation or a commencement speech for my boot camp because I was going back and uh, trying to give some advice to people who were going through the same journey that I did. And I looked back over my finance and my um, my tech career. My tech career was was taking off much better than my finance career. Uh, and I was reflecting on what made a difference. And the realization was that in finance, everything is private by default. Um, everything that you work on is you know, company secrets and, and it's a very zero sum view of the world because mm -hmm. anything that I share might be stolen by my competitors. Mm -hmm. Whereas in tech, it's a fundamentally different kind of industry where we're encouraged to share. We'll get up on stage and tell an open source of code and tell our competitors our secrets in, in an effort to hire them. Or we just have a positive view of the world. Like I can give away stuff and actually get something positive back in return that I would not have gotten otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that this is a core insight and I called my essay or my speech learn in public and I wrote it down and I published it in like an afternoon and it just went viral from there. Nice. Um, and I just realized that it really struck a chord with a lot of people who are like trying to find a way in terms of developing their career and growing their skills at the same time um, and growing their network uh, critically because I think people always need something to show like a blog or a portfolio or whatever. Um, and I think this one principle, this one rule sort of takes care of all the others if you just do it enough. <laughs> and and uh, so that was three years ago. Um, and I find that every time people resonate really well with it. So, and, and, I, and I find that it keeps benefiting me. So I'm happy to keep sharing the, the message, you know, the, the, the idea that you should learn in public um, and it's not as hard as you may think. Wow. Um, I really, what, what I took out of um, that wonderful explanation is, uh, this shift in your own morality in a lot of ways. Uh, and I'm fascinated by, and I don't want to knock people in the finance industry, right? Uh, but it is an interesting mindset to go from the zero sum game and to pursue profits, which in its own way is a form of morality to what open source technology is and what uh, technological education is, which is uh, meant to be uh, free and shared. And uh, in fact, you're almost dealing with a different kind of capitalism. So. Um, for our last question, I'd like to turn to uh, other people who have walked down your path and are still learning code and are still trying to make their way into these careers. What kind of advice would you like to share uh, that helped you tremendously in your own journey? Yeah, um, I think a lot of times the difficult thing is to have accountability as well as feedback. Um, we are social creatures. And we, we, we really need that feedback. Um, and some people might pay others to do it. Some, some people might get lucky with a mentor. Um, but for people who are trying to you know, get started in this journey, I always, get, I always tell people to essentially start a conversation with some, someone you're trying to learn from. So th this principle is called pick up what you put down. Um, uh, sorry, pick up what others put down, right? Like uh, a lot of the times you might be very self-focused when you do your uh, blogging and your learning. But if you engage with someone else that with someone else on stuff that they're actively involved in, then they almost have to respond. Um, they, you, you almost guarantee feedback on, on the stuff that you work on if it's based on their work. Uh, and that's, that's, I think, a way to basically permissionlessly apprentice yourself to some of the top people in the industry because all of them have more, more ideas than they know what to do with. Uh, they just don't have good collaborators. They have a lot of sort of passive hangers on who, who are just like, you know, expecting stuff from them, but they, they always want people to collaborate, to get involved in open source um, and to, to give them something that they don't have, which is the beginner's mind. Um, and if you can contribute in any way, it doesn't have to be code, it can be docs, uh, it can be marketing, it can be, you can be doing talks about the stuff that was already done or demos. Um, these are all valid ways to contribute. Um, and, and yeah, like as you build a, a, a reputation of being a good collaborator, people start to see you as friends and as peers, um, and eventually you will start to supersede them because you'll find your own path in this journey, in this industry, where you have your own strong opinions and people start following you for that. Um, and I think that's a, that's a really strong way to just build your brand as a, as a developer. Well, that's really helpful. And I, and I think uh, it's such a strange logic, right? Uh, for people to, in order for you to get ahead, you actually have to help other people and you've got to uh, <laughs> not only try to receive as much feedback for your own personal growth, but give it away too, right? And uh, and that sounds strangely utopian, um, but from my own experiences in code and certainly what it sounds like from your yours as well, it's completely the culture. And it is a very aspirational and, and, and intense culture in its own way, 
to be as generous as you can be, right? Uh, I don't know if you'd agree with that sentiment or not, but um, from what I've ex yeah. explained from the open source community, it actually does apply. Yeah, I would say it's not altruism. Um, so I think a lot of people try to phrase it in a sense of like charity, like I'm giving back to the community. Um, I think that's nice. That's a nice sentiment. But sometimes, uh, you know, I think so, some amount of self-motivation is, is actually pretty important. It just is genuinely the fastest way to learn. Um, and, and that's something I want to uh, impress upon people. This is not charity. This is um, really like an investment in yourself that uh, you can also build really genuine relationships with other people on. Um, so I, I hope I hope people you know try it out. I, I think it's a uh, it's definitely changed my life. You can get paid to learn in public. Uh, that's that's a lot of what developer relations and developer experience is. Um, the, my past two jobs I got entirely through blogging. Like eighty percent of jobs uh, out there are not uh, publicly listed in job boards. Like you have to, people have to know who you are, and it, it just they just uh, find you because you are the perfect person for the job without even knowing it. Um, so I encourage you to, to work on things that actively interest you. Basically put up a bad signal saying like, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, this is what I'm progressing on, um, and let people who are drawn to that uh, be a bigger part of your life. And I think that's, that's a more proactive way to take control of your career rather than like a reactive way of like, you know, every few years, go hunting on the job board, try to serialize your experience down onto a single page of a resume and hope that the other side has the correct deserialization algorithm to <laughs> deem you worthy of an interview. Like it's a very different way of making a career that I, that I really enjoy. Wow, that's really helpful um, and personally inspiring too. You know, it's like, I think having that level of, if you're not willing to stand behind your own brand as you establish it, then to expect other people to do the same is a bit strange, right? At the very least to say, if not, it doesn't work. Like you have to, uh, you have to, it's, a, it's almost like a self-investment, but a self-investment that trickles out to everything else too. Uh, Sean, we have come to the very end of our questioning and I wanna give you an opportunity to do a shameless plug of sorts. You can okay. talk about anything you like, whether it's the work you're doing, other things, your, um, you know, your community work, the floor is yours. Last year, I, I wrote, you know, all, all this career advice that I that from myself and from uh, 1500 other sources that I've collected uh, into a into a uh, 500 page book and then educative turned it into a course. Um, so it's called the coding career handbook where it has a lot of these similar practices and topics um, and I, I structure it into like principles strategies and, and tactics to broadly match with like your job, your career and then, you know, your, your yourself your identity as a human. Um, and then finally, I think I want to encourage people to think about self-care as well, because uh, there's a lot of physical elements of the job that people don't really talk about, emotional elements um, that we need to, to uh, manage in, in order to avoid uh, burnout, uh, which is a very real uh, affliction in, in our industry. And we, we have to have an open conversation about that. So um, whatever it is, I guess I'm, I'm self-plugging self-care. I don't know, but uh, that's, that's a big topic for me as well. Um, and it's a big topic, certainly for uh, us at Educative, as well as for coding in general. We've actually stumbled upon many conversations about this, too. And uh, I'm glad that you're contributing to that. Uh, and also, you know, yes, it's totally fine for you to uh, mention uh, the great work that inspired the work that's on our site, too. So uh, really, yeah, you all uh, did a great job, like making it interactive and like adding illustrations and stuff like that. I just I, I could not have done that. <laughs> that's very nice. <laughs> And hope other people listened. And yes, if you're already listening to this podcast, you'll probably know what we're all about. So um, let's go ahead and wrap up right there before I get ahead of myself. Um, Swix, uh, I want to say thank you so much for uh, really being, you know, our, the first author on our site to be featured on Educative Sessions. And um, really, a lot of the things that you've said today uh, resonate, whether you are a coder looking to grow in your career or just someone who's looking to find ways to produce themselves and be comfortable with uh at being aspirational i think there's a lot of takeaways there i also want to thank everyone else for either watching this on youtube or listening to us on our podcast uh thank you so much for just being a uh, part of our community uh lastly of course we want to have a final plug for educative you can check us out at educative.io where we can learn more about what we do and also what uh sean does for uh the coding community as well so thank you so much for listening to this podcast for all of us here at educative and beyond Happy learning. Bye-bye now. Bye.
Hope you enjoyed that session. This episode is available on YouTube and also on many podcast platforms. If you'd like to be part of Educative Sessions, the form is open now to apply via the link below. You can also email me at lee at educative.io. Lastly, don't forget to like and comment on our content. Be sure to subscribe for us as well. And of course, you can learn more about us at educative.io. Happy learning.